tea sippers it's time for your favorite girl of true ladies end of the year video this is where i sit down and recap moments from 2020 lord can we hurry up and get to 2021 already i know i am tired of the ups and downs ups and downs this year have brought to not only myself but everyone around me The pandemic took over the entire year of 2020, tea sippers We were all locked down and shut in because COVID-19 completely took over 2020. What a year! Not only did the pandemic affect the world, but it affected me personally, tea sippers I had COVID, but as you can see, I survived and bounced back. But I will tell that story another day. Let's see what they had to say. COVID-19. This year has not really been, like, it, it ain't been mm. a year for me. It affected the people around me. We lost Jay Rich. It impacted my life, just like everybody else's life, in so many different ways. People I know got in, they pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. I lost an uncle, I lost an auntie. And it, it was a trail virus, and it was real. Mm -hmm. And it was something that slowed up the entire year, and it was something, you know, I ain't never seen before in my life. Bro, I done, I done lost... Like, I can't, to be honest, I can't even count on both my hands how I many people I've lost this year. Me having it and family having it and losing a friend from it, it was pretty real. Like, that shit just came out of nowhere. But it's, it's still surreal. At this point, it's still people want to say, oh, it's not real, but it's really not undeniable at this point. It was scary. It was scary. It impacted a lot of people. I lost a friend. It ruined a perfectly good year. It'll, thank God I didn't have a quarantine period or, you know, work from home or anything. So, honestly, it's kind of like I just try to make sure throughout all of this that I've maintained my mental state because I feel like I'm always exposed. So If you still feel like it ain't real, I don't know where you at, living under a rock or something. I don't know. You in denial. It is an assumption that I may have had in January. But that was before everybody was doing all this widespread testing. So. It, it was a, a real virus. It was something, really, I ain't never had a year like this in my life. Every time I cough, I'm like, Lord, is it my turn? For me, it was just scary, and it's still scary to this day. I will not be getting the vaccine for about at least three years. I first said I ain't fucking with it, but... I mean, we don't have a cure for uh, common cold, mm -hmm. flu, um... HIV, AIDS, uh, gonorrhea, syphilis. It's a list of. The second round, y'all done worked out some of the bugs. People I ain't gonna be like that nurse that passed out. And getting Bell's palsy. Yeah, where this shit going? What the fuck we gonna do? Yeah, STDs. It's a list of common diseases people catch every day, about hundreds of thousands, mm -hmm. tens of thousands that we don't have a cure for. But I'm not gonna be one of the first ones to jump and get it because, okay, so one week y'all released that y'all got the vaccine vaccine and people have started taking it the next week it's a new strand out there so is, is this taking care of that like it's i need i need more numbers I need i'm not getting shot until goddamn i see at least goddamn a hundred million people got down right on they shit with goddamn vaccine to me medicine can find an urgent cure now think about how many of your family members or family members that have died and, and people from cancers things of this uh situation, mm -hmm. those type of illnesses, we don't have no cure for that. I'm not about to be no test dummy. I'm not, I don't, I don't like pharmaceuticals any goddamn way. If I got anything going on with me, I'm going to go some natural remedies. I need more statistics, I need more data, I need to, I need to make sure that it's not going to affect me in certain ways that I don't want to be affected. Mm -hmm. Come on, man, what your grandma did? That rub on your feet, put your sock over there, and overnight you got down here in the morning. Yeah, that's how I still do that to this day. And I tell you what, we do have a cure for it in health and medicine in America. You want some bigger titties? You want your rib removed? You want a, you want a thinner waistline? You want bigger lips? You don't like your eye color. Maybe you don't like your forehead and line up. It's a whole lot of cosmetic surgeries we can do for the right price and get your ass in a uh, tip-top shape. One of the biggest stories of 2020 that had to be a little salacious was rapper Meg Thee Stallion being shot or shot at or hit with bullets, fragments, whatever. Sis was injured and we were all placing the blame on Tory Lanez. 
Now, we don't know the full details of what happened in that vehicle, but all we know is it was Meg, Tory Lanez, Meg's friend, Kelsey Nicole, and the security all in one vehicle. Tory was arrested. Meg was rushed to the hospital. So you do the math, t sippers. Who shot Megan? I mean, I really just would like to know what actually happened. Some shit went on we don't know about. I would have liked to know when it first happened. There was only four people. You know, who there was, she didn't shoot herself. Mm -hmm. The best friend ain't shoot her. The security guard ain't gonna shoot her. Who shot her in her pinky toe? You, nigga, you, you only it. the person left, you, nigga, you know? You I just feel like, of course, now since it's gone to, you know, to the courts and everything, y'all need to just leave it alone in the public eye. There's a lot to the story that we don't know, you know? But at the end of the day, regardless of what we do know or we don't know, he shouldn't have shot her. She was hanging with college and the next thing you know, she shot in the foot and it was ter Tory Lanez and now her and her best friend aren't best friends anymore. And the day when they like posted the screen record of them being, uh, her being on live with college and Tory Lanez, when I saw that video, I said, you can't hang with just everybody. Like when I yeah. saw that video, I was like, it just didn't sit right with me when I saw it. So when the story broke out the next day that she got shot, I was like. And I would have liked to know what happened when her toe was still, when her foot was still healing. I just didn't like how people were ready to like deny her getting shot. She got shot at, even if the bullet might not have went through, that was too close. He should have stayed quiet. That's another thing I didn't like. You say nothing at all, yeah, but no he dropped the album. Everything Tory Lanez has been doing has been textbook abuser. If you learned nothing ass. from them this year, learn that when shit go down, shut, shut the fuck up. Hmm. You took the album to say what you gotta say and make money off of it. Dumbass like, way to try to monetize the situation. I don't know if he shot Megan or not, but his character and his history, it doesn't look good. I hope, you know, all the success too, and she make it the way she trying to go, which is what she probably had right fucking out, but... You know, she's doing her thing. I mean, it really ain't slow it down. Like now, it's, she's, she's whole again. What a year to be alive with the presidential elections. Oh, how they were embarrassing. Embarrassing. The American people had no say who they wanted to be their president when only two candidates were up for bet. Our current sitting president tweeted his whole life away for 2020. Miraculously, he beat COVID and made it seem like it was not that bad of a, a virus. But something about this election for me personally felt rigged and made me feel a type of way. I wonder if I was alone in those thoughts. Let's see what they had to say. The whole election was a laughing stock from beginning to end. Tempo. From... I don't like 45. I don't. I don't. That nigga is not my president. And this election was a whole lot of fuckery. Like, this year, I, I, my first time voting. From in 2020, you know, I knew something was wrong when everybody just started dropping out, like, back to back to back. Um, election season has just been, um, almost embarrassing. I don't know. I'm not too much into politics, to mm -hmm. be honest with you now. Mind you, I still know what's going on and shit like that, but I know, for me, it's like a facade type mm -hmm. deal, you know? All we had was Biden and Trump. That's it. Shit, as long as my boy Joe got in there, I'm straight. The only reason I did that shit is because local. Mm. Like, I seen some of the faces I know. So, shit, I just, I hopped in just to support. Like, Trump's the first president to win a popular vote, I mean, uh, to lose a popular vote twice. None of the recounts have resulted in a change in the winner. My city, my city went viral. Oh, yes, for the wrong things, in my opinion. 20 a Pineville police officer managed to shoot himself while on duty, but reported back to the station saying that he was shot and ambushed by two black individuals. Not only did he misuse his weapon while on clock, but he jeopardized the lives of any black male. With the climate of the culture of 2020, one would think this was not the time to uh, make up a lie about black people, about black men in any shape, form, or fashion. But 
the police officer felt the need and not only did his actions go viral he was given donkey of the day by Charlemagne the god on the breakfast club yeah i was oh shit I was okay, so initially when the story came out the way they had it, I was scared. They like two black men yeah. in Bush too. Over so yeah, he made it to the breakfast club. You can't say a black person for five good shots. Um, that was terrible. And you know what? Now that you bring that back up, why did that just kinda disappear? I feel sorry for them niggas that was out that night. That night he time when he got shot. Somebody spooked you? And they shot back at you while running backwards. Not looking. Not aiming. Don't even know if they aiming at you the right way. But they shot you. We all know Pineville shut down at 8 p.m. None of that stuff is going on. But then we find out you did this to yourself. And what nigga gonna shoot a cop in Pineville? That was so silly, boy. I don't know what the hell you was thinking, but that sound like some goddamn ball shit. That wasn't pine, but that was ball. <laughs> All the whole time, bro, you up there about Super 10 talking about something. You about to go use the bathroom and your gun go off. Hey, bro, why don't you get you a gun that's got a safety on it, actually? Like, you barely hit your gun and shot yourself in the leg. It's embarrassing. Now, we also went viral because of Jonathan Rhodes. A young black man at the at the Rapids Regional Emergency Center, and he got into an altercation with the home duty police officer. And when I say altercation, I'm really downplaying the situation. Now, again, as I always say, the climate of the culture is telling, and sometimes you need to read the room. I'm not siding with either party, but I do understand why it happened and how it happened. That's just my opinion. Let's see what they had to say. Boom, pow, boom, pow, steady slanging at that nigga. I mean, I hate that he got beat up, but it was funny. He whooped that nigga ass like he owed him something. That was bad. Um, you know, especially everything that the police have been in in the news and media for this year. Who posted that first? I think 50 Cent posted that yeah. first. I mean, wow, I was surprised they didn't shoot him. You know what I'm saying? I was surprised he wasn't severely the shit kicked out of him. The golf cart stole the show. And then the golf cart came in rolling on two wheels. Look at Alexandria. Now we need to put on with the artist now, goddamn. There were several wrong decisions made in that situation. Several. By everybody involved. Shout out to the golf cart. It seems like every year I sit down and give this speech about the social injustice that takes place throughout the year. With the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and many, many more tea sippers, when will it come to an end? When will we, as the black community, melanated people, be appreciated and not slain in the streets by law enforcement? Have you become numb to the situation? Or are you still fighting for our awareness? Let's check out what they had to say. Everybody was just like, who, who was writing this day of script for 2020? You get into an uproar, you know, we get into this mode where we need, we, we tell ourselves that we need to do this, we need to do that, we stand together, you know, all of a sudden, all the brands want to be on our side, say Black Lives Matter, this and that, then a month passes, and it's back to normal, nothing's done, we're not talking about what we need to do, what we need to fix anymore. It was, it was, it was like a combine of the good and the bad. That was very draining to yeah. see emotionally, like over and over yeah. and over. It's been terrible to see that all that has gone on in the midst of a pandemic. George Floyd was an eye opener for a lot of people in society. Like, I seen beauty through it because for once, I seen black people kind of stick together. I feel like we may have actually covered a little bit of ground on that this year. Uh, the biggest thing is that I've seen a lot of hearts change. Storyline pops up again and we're back where we started. At the end of the day, it's, it's disheartening, it's sickening, but I'm just tired of this continuous cycle every single time. Um, you know, it's crazy to be in the year that we are in. I feel like um, everybody's just coming together with the protests and making a statement and actually doing um, some legwork to actually get change and make things happen. Bro, the overall, these racist, bigoty ass people caused this year, that's a very small percentage of how the vast majority of the world really, really feel. Exactly. You dig what I'm saying? And the, the ruckus and the bullshit this man kicked up. And the type of people like him and that supported him, the shit they kicked up, where the fuck they at now? 
and then hold themselves and others accountable. So I think we did make some strides with that. I seen how that debacle, but it also it kind of defied us because we we lost focus on what the main mission was. And there was a lot of misinformation regarding people saying defund the police. Mm -hmm. Hearing that without context, I can understand why you would be like, ah, that's a bit of a radical idea. In that same fucking space of being your neighbor, being your co-worker, being your friend, being your everything on the in-between, and that's fine. Y'all just need to keep y'all ass in y'all perspective. And that's in the backwoods, hidden under a bush, behind a rock, on some hill have eyes type shit. With your good sir. Right, with your kinfolk now. But if I understood it correct, the notion was cutting the budget because a lot of police forces have money for all these military grade equipment and it's like there are other things we could be doing with that money they st they were still killing us in that time like while we were protesting the march and shit. It's, it's not it's not gonna be just just us you know we gotta have some people from the other side to be able to you know staying with us change you know it can't be the same cycle like i said these corporations making all the money a month later and we just left with the pain and no yeah. r r resolve. Like the only way I think we'll have social injustice is if we get people inside the police. Get the you telling me that the CEO of Disney can't sit down and, and get a meeting with, with the president? He can't get a meeting or arrange some type of, of meeting? The, the NFL commissioners, the NBA commissioners, mm -hmm. Major League, all of these guys, these team owners, these one percenters, billionaires. I don't think that shit gonna never gonna stop until we, you know, we yeah. boss up and you know put get more lawyers, black lawyers, get more black police, get more mm -hmm. black uh, judges, which we are doing. But you know what I'm saying? We just gotta educate ourselves. These people that profit off of the black image and LeBron James and what he stand for, mm -hmm. they have the access and the cliche to meet with said senators, to meet with said presidents. Mm -hmm. A lot of these NFL team owners, a lot of these. Uh, Fortune 500 companies, you know, that that stayed and, and did these markets and these rallies mm -hmm. that we support the black movement, but they never really did anything that could secure a legislation for the black man. While we were all on lockdown and looking for entertainment, of course you had Boosie taking his talents to IG Live. Put your lips on live, I give you a thousand dollars. Club quarantine, DJs creating a club in their living rooms and bringing it to others. But the versus battle is definitely what really stood out. I think it was a really good concept given the circumstances. Like, yeah. you literally have a captive audience because everybody is at home. Uh, uh, the greatest thing in hip hop since goddamn me, uh, I don't know, 50 Cent. That was versus show for me. Like, it showed goddamn two two sides of the story, you know what I'm saying? With every with every every party that they they put together, mm -hmm. they put them together for a reason because they were somewhat alike. Or they came around a somewhat time or some shit like that, right? Mm -hmm. But still in the same sense you've seen two different individuals. The versus battles have been everything. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I did too. You know? I think it was a great movement to do and very smart and like fast thinking. Knowing that everybody's inside, well let's put People's favorite artists together, see where they go. That shit was fire. That shit was fire. You can get go from the goddamn Swiss and Tim. Because Tim and Swiss started it off. Uh, but see, when it first started, quarantine was still really, really heavy. They, mm -hmm. you know, so they wanted to keep everybody separate. That's why they were doing the virtual thing. It was Tim and Swiss, because I, I never forget that night I was watching that nigga Tim. That nigga say, made me, made me come out my, made me come out in this cold and get in my car. Come on, Timothy. <laughs> Timothy, where you at, Timothy? <laughs> Monica versus was nice. It was like Snoop and DMX. Snoop West Coast got down, you know, low rider got down, calm, cool, collective. DMX got down, ride it up, uh, East Coast. And we can't forget Alicia Keys did get on John Legend. Yeah. Well, E40 and Too Short had a good vibe, good energy. And I was excited to see Too Short. You know what I'm saying? But still, mm -hmm. in the same sense, they both God fearing men. So, you know, you got a connection, but you also got a difference. Yeah, he's uh, also in the Jeezy and Goo up, like you see in the street, nigga, in the corporate nigga. Gucci Mane and Jeezy versus, I feel like I was gonna get shot or something. Um, I ain't care about nothing else. I just wanted to hear so icy. Uh, you know, and, and Big Snow. <laughs> Big Snow, I didn't know where that come from, yeah. but it, that night, a five foot five man with Big Snow all of a sudden. But it was cool, it, it rolled. Get it to the goddamn Goo up and Jeezy, I think that shit was goddamn.
crazy. I'm sorry, but I gotta say it, man. I know it's going out, but I gotta say it. We smoking a whole pookie load tonight. Man, nigga can put his hands on my smile, look. Man, look. Smoke a motherfucking pookie load. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. oh my God. I thought it was about to be a, a gun battle. It got too serious. Like, the tension was so thick, like, I was in the room with them. He smoking my homie tonight. Oh, yeah, damn. My nigga showed the utmost disrespect. That was the one. Hey, man. Business is business. They handle business. And I respect both of them for that. It's still some tension there. Yeah. Oh, all them technical difficulties and rescheduling. I ain't gonna lie. Right, my boy, the even though Uncle Teddy, even, even though Uncle Teddy had to, Teddy. you know, he, hey, Teddy. Bro, it wasn't supposed Teddy. to be live. Bro. Teddy. And we all trying to chew on some popcorn and watch this shit. And this nigga can't get sound correct. <laughs> it made some of the best pop moments of the year. Hey, baby face say no. I got on white iPhone headphones. So, you know, like nigga, you doing too much for one. <laughs> Baby face like yo baby, Teddy yo uh look man I mean I'm in the studio baby got some iPods and yeah you know yeah he really came with the theatrics shooting slugs damn what you was twelve when you did that you eleven okay oh shit I thought you was in Pampers I liked watching the one with Patty Labelle just cause I love her her stage energy um uh, my favorite was Patty. And Gladys, Ooh, we had Patty LaBelle and Gladys Knight. Come on, man. Come That's on, some man. But that kind of type stuff, right you there. You can't. the bird dance and everything. It was living good. Yeah. I'd love to see a Ja Rule in 50, though. While the world was shut down, everyone was sitting at home waiting for some type of income to come to their aid. Now, in other countries, they receive stipends every month for a certain amount of dollars. But here in the United States, we only receive one payment of $1,200 plus dollars. Not to mention unemployment every week had went up. There were PPE loans and things of that nature. But which one did you have this year? Did you get all three? Did you just get your STEMI? Did you get your unemployment? Let's hear what they have to say. Yeah, I got the STEMI. <laughs> Instead of unemployment, I just work from home, and I'm still work from home to this day. So, and I, I am very grateful that I was not one of those people that got put on furlough and was on furlough for months at a time, trying to figure out what was gonna, what I was gonna do. But at the same time, I felt bad watching the people that had to go through that, like knowing that these people don't know when or if they're going back to work. I, I feel like I work, worked pretty much throughout the whole. COVID-19, this pandemic. I was working hard before COVID and uh, did reap some of the unemployment benefits, if you know what I mean. I get that initially they thought it was supposed to be temporary. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this one check because we should only be down for a right, month. Right, But right. when it was clear that this month was not enough. Yeah, it was like my first time ever getting unemployment for four weeks. Mm -hmm. That's a long time I got this shit. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I felt like I should have got more for one. I got like the max. And that wasn't even like my hourly salary. Yeah, what did I do with my stimulus? Did I blow my stimulus? Germany got about seven racks. I told Steve, oh shit, I'm about to go, I'm about to go move to Germany. Get my seven racks. Yeah, I got my stimulus. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna get whatever they go, go throw it. After three months, the people that own the business where you work, they can't reopen. They don't have the money. So now they close and you just, you just out of luck, out of luck. Well, yeah, I got one of the PPE loans and I use it to get some, uh, New camera equipment and stuff like that. So yeah. some people was getting by what ten thousand. Yeah, I had a lecture buying Lambos. My thoughts on the scamming is like, ain't nobody cut me in. Like, where, where was I when all of this was going on? You know, there's three letters in this world mm -hmm. that I like to call the alphabet, boys. <laughs> That's what folks do. That's what, that's what folks do. You know, and I ain't gonna necessarily say black or white because white folks scam and scheme and they take from FEMA, everybody on the in-between. Just, just just, like the, you know, the brother man does at certain times. To all you scammers in this world, bro, why all these why all these checks was being posted and everything handed out? Hey, bro, just know, they was watching y'all ass. You know, because as soon as you slip up, they gonna wham bam your stupid ass Thanks. anyway. So since society gonna get it up out your ass, you might as well get it up out of society. So all that money that y'all was scamming, just know 
Just know, oh, they coming for your ass. You guys, I am hoping to put an end to 2020 and that prosperous things will take place in 2021. Be on the lookout for more tea from your favorite girl, the true lady. Now, you already know where to find me, tea sippers. Catch the tea TV on everything, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, or really search for the hashtag catch the tea. And we out.